So you had to have hydraulic pumps, all of this extra circuitry, all of this added weight to make the car worse. As all my stories began, I'm sort of the purveyor of weird, obscure cars. I've got people reaching out to me all the time, et cetera, et cetera. I had an email a couple of years ago from a guy. I think the subject line was out of production cars or something like that. Something innocuous. And in the body of the email, he said, I have these three Codas. If you don't know what a Coda is, it's an electric car that was built in California off the body of some lowest bidder Chinese car that it, it, it looks so bland. It looks like sort of the uh, Grand Theft Auto version of a Kia Spectra or maybe like a Hyundai Elantra or a Suzuki Liana, Verona, one of those cars. It looks like a generic Asian styled curvy car from the mid 2000s. Anyway, they started an electric car company in 2012 is when they actually started selling these cars and that lasted a year before they went out of business. The company was just racking up debt left and right. They had no real good business plan. There were some hostile takeovers that they did and then the motor supplier also did hostile take backs of the motors and stuff. Like they raided the factory and took motors away. Anyway, Coda was a short-lived electric car company that produced a very mediocre product. Overall, they say they sold 115 Codas. The first Codas, they have this really aspirational plaque in them that say number whatever of 500. And <laughs> eventually they realized that that wasn't gonna work and they stopped putting these plaques in the cars, but they only ended up selling 117 before the company went out of business. And this guy had three of them. He had three of them because he was an ex-employee of Coda. He was a battery engineer. So these cars had lithium iron phosphate battery packs. They're 30 kilowatt hours. They claimed 125 miles. The EPA said, no, it's 88 miles. But realistically, you don't want to go 88 miles. You're going to be stranded somewhere. Didn't have any DC fast charging capability. So you're on a leash from home. It's, it's an early electric car from 2012. Don't really need to say any more than that. Anyway, he had three of them. Two of them were prototype cars. At one point, all three of them were prototype cars. There was a company called EDI that, because they were cheap, because the company went out of business, had bought several Codas and was converting, well, using them as development cars for these electric conversion kits that were commissioned by a Chinese research institute. And the thing they commissioned was an electric car with a CVT. Now, I don't know why they wanted such a thing, but you know, if someone's paying for it, the EDI, the company that's actually doing the conversions and, and developing the kit, they're just gonna do what the customer wants. So that's what they were developing with these cars. So they took out the stock single gear gearbox, which was a Borg Warner unit, and the wonderful 100 kilowatt UQM motor and controller, and they swapped it out with a nice inverter from Simicron, and a really cheap Jinjing motor that made less power. So instead of 100 kilowatts, which is 134 horsepower, it made 80 kilowatts. So about 110 horsepower, sure way less torque because that UQM pumpkin of a motor puts out 220 pound feet of torque. This Jinjing thing was way smaller. So I imagine its torque figure was like 100, 150 pound feet, if that. And then they coupled it to a CVT. So the thing about CVTs is if you have them in an internal combustion vehicle, that's fine because they're hydraulically controlled. They have hydraulic pumps that are driven off of the engine that do all of the cone shifting and CVT actuations. But if you put that in an electric car, you have to have something else to power the hydraulics in the CVT. So they put hydraulic pumps in there. Each one of these hydraulic pumps, there were two or three of them were like this big. And what were they driven by? Well, they were driven by separate motor controllers that they mounted in the trunk. There was this big, and I still have three of them, there's this big control box in the trunk that has the motor controllers, two of them, for these hydraulic pumps, these big things in the front, and DC to DC converters to drive those motor controllers. So the battery setup in this car like all electric cars, you've got the high voltage pack and you've got 12 volt battery for, you know, all the ancillary headlights and things. This car had both of those things, 
But in addition to that, it had, so it had the DC to DC converter that stepped down the 333 volts from the traction battery to 12 volts for the ancillary systems. But it also had, for these hydraulic pumps, another DC to DC converter that stepped that 12 volts up to 48 volts to drive these hydraulic pumps. So all of this effort was just to put a CVT in an electric car. So you had to have hydraulic pumps, all of this extra circuitry, all of this added weight to make the car worse. These prototypes did not go anywhere. They were developing as, as apparently as kits, which is why they swapped out the motors for a cheaper unit so that they could make them more profitable. But apparently the uh, Chinese Research Institute pulled out and never even paid for these things. So they had several of them and this guy that used to work for Coda had three of them. And at one point he got, I guess, really ambitious and converted one of them back to stock. So he took all of this prototype garbage, the rat's nest wiring, the box out of the back with all the hydraulic pump controllers and everything, took all that garbage out and put back in the, the original Borg Warner e-gear drive and the UQM motor and controller. And the knowledge he must have had to do all of this because the car, I have it, it works. It's all the wiring he had to redo. He had to plug all the wiring back into the harnesses. He had to have intimate knowledge of the car to do this. If I would have attempted it, I would have set it on fire and claimed insurance. It's just a nightmare, but he did that. And then he just, they were just taking up space in his driveway. So he was gonna take him to a scrap yard and he, he just emailed me because I was into weird cars. I got a Wego, got a Trabant, and I seem to be really into electric car things. So he emailed me and I said, yes, I want them. And he gave them to me for free. I drove to California. I borrowed a truck and trailer, drove to California, picked up two of them, brought them back. And then a couple months later, I drove out to California again to pick up the remaining third one in another car. And I brought him back to my shop. I made a series of videos getting the one that was converted back to stock back to roadworthy standards, which wasn't a heck of a lot of work. Most of it was just because it had been sitting for so long and had four very flat tires. The Chinese made body was, now not that all Chinese made things are crap, but this thing definitely was. The Chinese made body was falling apart all over the place. Apparently the trunk poppers break in every single coda. So I had to make a new one of my own using a little solenoid. I had fun with that. The rear window regulators, they break a lot. I've just worked on that. The door handles, they break. I fixed that, but I had a lot of help because I also had two other parts cars and these two prototype cars, I'm leaving them as prototype cars. They can never be driven again. The module that controls something, I don't remember what, but there's a few pieces of the componentry missing, so they can never be used again. And on top of that, one of them was bought straight from a dealership, so it was never registered, and the other one has no VIN. It was never sold or used as any capacity, but it was taken from auto show to auto show, and you can tell that there's some interesting remnants on it because it used to be white, but it's blue now. So they skim-coated the whole thing in Bondo. I've taken a knife to the paint, and it's just, it's a real thick layer of Bondo over the whole freaking car. And it's blue now because instead of taking a different car to auto shows, they just repainted the same car. I could be tinfoil hat and say it's to make it look like they had more inventory than they did, but I think it was just because they wanted a different looking car in, in different photos of things. It's also got electric car stickers all over it. <laughs> They're ridiculous because this, you know, this thing is sort of a joke. Oh, you can go 70 miles one way, so you can only go 30 miles away from home, and then you have to come back again. Anyway, so I have all those cars. I fixed up the Coda, the one Coda that works. I made it roadworthy again, and I drove it around for quite a while, and then the CV shaft started clicking a year ago. Then I just parked it, and uh, a couple of months ago, I decided I'm gonna work on this car. I wanna drive it again, I miss my Coda. Even though it's, it's like driving around a silent Corolla. It's not very well made and it's not very high quality. And in the process of doing that, I got all the little things to work, like the rear windows finally roll up and down smoothly, the speedometer works again, and then I broke the motor mounts off of the e-gear drive. There were only three bolts holding it in and now there's only one. 
so I can't drive it around. Probably when I go back home, I'll have to work on that, which will be real fun, because that's the one thing I don't have any spare parts for is that e-gear drive, because the other two cars that are my parts cars have these stupid prototype drivetrains in them. So the Coda, the one working Coda still doesn't, and I've got three of them. Premier Financial Services makes it easier and more affordable than you could possibly imagine to own your dream car. Their simple lease is one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits like the tax savings and the low payments of a lease with all the additional benefits that you'd normally find in a traditional finance arrangement. You can build up equity, you can pay it off early, you can trade in and out of cars because you get a very clear and easy to understand amortization table to understand what your payoff will be any month throughout your term. And all the while, the amazing team from Premier Financial Services will be right there to help you along the way. They've been supporters of the VinWiki channel now for five years in a row, so we can't thank them enough for that, but mostly we're thankful for the fact that they can help you make it easier than ever to own your dream car. Check them out now.